Sleaze meets nail guns. That's all. Nail Gun Mask was released in I have no clue when. The wiki says the screen initially had a film festival at 86, INDB says 85, Google says 87, and the wiki also says 87, so who the hell knows? Written and directed by Terry Lofton, who was a stuntman of Dukes of Hazzards, Nail Gun Mask is a rape revenge story infamous for its home video run and its classic post that kind of sold the movie itself. The film is packed with both bees of horror. Thankfully, although one is a higher quality than the other, decide for yourself which one that is. A crew of construction workers assault a woman on their job site in Texas, and it seems she returns six months later with a nail gun and compressor on her back to take revenge. Those are the worst headaches. The ones between the eyes. The film from here is a string of teens making it in the woods or on the roof of a car, and then the nail gun killer shows up and hits them with a Ling Robocop one-liner and shoots them with nails. The kills here are a little repetitive, but they keep coming instead of the naked women, so I guess it's got a home. Shot in three weeks in Texas with a $50,000 budget and 25-page screenplay cut down from 80 pages, distributors had them add more sex scenes to the film to the dismay of Lofton's grandmother, who's got a cameo in the film where you'd actually see her reading her own lines. Mm. I bet you ain't never seen the butterfly, wild butterflies in these parts. Actor John Rutter's wife even left him over an explicit scene he shot in the woods. Even fans argue today whether or not it was real or simulated. From here, we get a string of more murders, and we follow a cop in a non-cop cop car, and the doc who investigate the murder spree. It takes them pretty much the whole movie to realize that everyone's dying here is a construction worker and put two and two together. They finally corner the killer over a dozen murders later and they fall to their death. The killer's demasked like a Scooby-Doo villain and it's official. The girl from the beginning isn't the killer and it's her brother Bubba, I guess. Even though early in the film the killer admits to being the girl and sure, whatever. Hell, both of them maybe are the killers, extreme style, but uh, you know, who knows. I guess the doc is a thing for the, the girl, so it doesn't all matter. And this train wreck of a film is finally over. Was it a bad movie? Yes. Was it still fun? I'd say so. It's a cheesy ass 80 slasher flick with a single gimmick used in every single kill, but it keeps rolling for the most part. At least it's not really boring, except for the five minutes the doc retells the film over the phone to a character we never meet and who never plays into the plot. It's a short movie, but at times it does drag. But it's just a film made by a man who wants to put a bunch of shitty likes to you, like nail guns, boobs, and country boys, I guess. It's a very amateur movie. People forget their lines and stumble over them a lot. Dipshit! The effects are very amateur and one-liners are pretty lame, but there's a charm to it. Everyone here is pretty much brand new to the scene or were in small roles before, like the doc was in Rotor and Time Tracers. And This is a writer-directorial debut for Terry Lofton, who was inspired by the film as he saw two of his buddies duke it out with nail guns at a construction site as recreated in the movie, and he spun it into a passion project. There's also scenes where the audio is pretty messed up and you can't really hear the conversation over a car. I think he's going out to the open or times when people would die and you can still see them breathe or even blink. The title card's kind of weird too. Just strange laughter from the villain plays over the opening credits. It's, it's, it's just weird. my biggest gripe with the film is the compressor makes no noise you would hear the killer coming from a mile away with a backpack compressor like that i don't think reason was taken into question with the film at all but i guess maybe it's more of a co2 cancer but it still bothers me and also the idea that it's her brother was the killer just makes no sense because i mean clearly the the killer is a, is a female has a female stature uh in comparison to what the brother looks like i think but uh, whatever what are you gonna do again no reason was taken into question here it's got a legacy of sleaze and tease. It would go on to inspire Leap Blower Massacre, another duo of films I've got to cover one of these years. We do get a goofy slasher villain, premarital kissy, a nail gun to the groin, nails to the tatas, a random hearse, exploitation heaven, boobs, breathing bodies, terrible acting, robo biker, and a million shots and nails over and over and over. Well, you just pissed me off. The moon is right. This man's ready to howl. <laughs> All you want to do is ride out that damn sweet car, you asshole. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you aren't already, drop a little subscription down below. Make sure you stay tuned because every day in the month of October, I'm dropping a different horror movie review. Uh, I believe they come at 7 a.m. Uh, Eastern time. 
And uh, so keep an eye out for that. And then every week, every other week uh, throughout October, there's a bonus comic video still coming up. I still want to make sure there's still some combo content on the channel. And then throughout the rest of the year, there's combo content every single week, one to two times a week. Plus, I do the YouTube shorts where I post stuff on there every day. I got the Instagram. I got the Facebook. I got the, in the Facebook group fans unleashed where you get a behind the scenes look at the, the you know, whole channel, everything, Connors Comics, the whole company, all that kind of stuff. So all, all that is linked down in the description below. And again, make sure you subscribe. Keep an eye out for updating daily videos. And uh, until next time, peace.